how simple was prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his lifestyle and how very simple and humble was he in all spheres of life like his clothes prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wear he used to wear and he used to like and prefer prefer wearing simple white clothes simple white cotton clothes and even when these clothes they got old and they they were torn he used to he used to darn them with his own hands when his shoe used to break he used to repair them with his own hands and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised that whoever wears simple dress whoever wears simple dress despite the fact that the person can afford to wear expensive dresses then on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the person to choose a dress for himself out of the valuable <clears throat> out of the valuable dresses of jannah so if we think how obsessed if we just compare how obsessed we women folk are about our dresses about designer dresses and how many clothes how many extra dishes uh, dresses do we have hanging in our cupboards and our wardrobes that we don't even get a chance to wear some dresses in a season and then we pack them off for the next season prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he saw his dearest wife as aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha wearing a golden jewelry all the gold is permissible for muslim women but then advising and suggesting simplicity to her that aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha he advised aisha it would have been better for you if you had worn a jewelry other than gold and you had got it dyed with zafran so now what days there's a there is a race there's a rat race for all forms of jewelries matching jewelries and designer jewelries and carrots and the sizes of the carrots of the diamonds hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had gone on a travel and he was going to return after a travel and just to decorate her house before her husband came back as aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she hung a silver a silken curtain a silken curtain on the wall or on the door when prophet salasan returned and he saw this he saw a silken curtain hanging in the apartment of azat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha he said aisha these walls made of mud and stone they are not worthy of being decorated with silks where do we stand where are we up to layers and layers of silken draperies and upholsteries and curtains hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and then hazrat fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she hung a curtain with a picture on the door you know prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's routine was that when he came back from a journey he would go to the mosque first of all and there he would offer some nawafil and then he would go to the house of hazrat fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha his beloved daughter now one day when he came and he saw that the door had been decorated with a curtain having a picture a picture of a horse or something living he returned without seeing he returned without meeting his daughter and the grandchildren has fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala and how when she found out that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had gone back without meeting her she ran to see him and asked asked him the cause of his annoyance and when she found out she went back home and she took off the curtain and she tore it off and the simplicity of the bed of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the bedding of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was just it was just a simple blanket and the blanket 
used to be shifted to the apartment of the wife whose turn it would be and at night the blanket was doubled up and it was just folded up when it was just double as a layer for the bedding of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when one night has a hafsa radiyallahu ta'ala anha she just thought about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's comfort she made four layers of the blanket to just make it a bit softer and in the morning when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got up he inquired that why was my blanket folded to make it softer because a softer bed and a softer bedding it is it stops one from getting up early in the morning for tahajjud then for fajr just need to compare the four poster beds and the beds and the beddings and the bread spreads and the all forms of expensive and heavy and luxurious bed linens and all and then we claim to love prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we claim to be the followers of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as regarding the diet it was simple it was simple to the finest extent as aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha after the death of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she was found talking to her nephew hazrat urwa bin zubair radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and who and she was telling him that my nephew one moon used to come and the second moon used to come and the third moon used to come that is two months almost and we did not light up fire in our stoves and the nephew immediately asked what did you eat my aunt and she very simply she was not complaining she was just informing she said that black thing in water the black thing means what the dates and she added except that on a few occasions the neighbors used to send the milk of the goat and you know what that used to be an ultimate treat for the family of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha eating freshly cooked and freshly prepared food two times a day sometimes i read that three times a day prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately immediately tried to train hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and he said aisha would you desire would you desire that eating becomes your life that eating and feeding and wanting and desiring to have good food and tasty food being the ultimate and the primary priority of your life where do we stand and how do we decide our priorities in life when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to travel he used to have roasted ground oats for his food how very simple and how very convenient and easy and practical for a journey and there was an occasion when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam visited one of his companions and uh, the companions as a host he served freshly picked dates and uh, the fresh cool water of his well and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after eating these fresh dates which he really was very fond of he said that all those who are blessed all those who are blessed will be asked about their blessings on the day of judgment allahumma hasibna hisab yasira Hazrat Anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very fond of pumpkin in his food and um, he narrates that once he visited one of his companions and uh, they as hosts they uh, presented with the gravy of pumpkins 
and there was just one dish and Hazrat Anas radiyallahu ta'ala and who says that I saw Prophet sallallahu picking up the pieces from his plate and eating it with his hands how simple and how humble and then simplicity in the wedding ceremonies how simple were marriage ceremonies in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she, when she was married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what happened and how did she come to the house of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? She was the daughter of the companion of the cave. And she was the daughter of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was the first to embrace Islam. How happy the father must have been. How overjoyed he must have been at this occasion when he, when he knew that his daughter was to enter the house of Prophet Wasallam. But how was her wedding ceremony arranged? She narrates herself that I was just sitting on a swing with my friends that my mother has a Dumir Rahman radiallahu ta'ala anha, she came and she took me off from the swing and with her headdress, she just wiped my hands and she just cleaned and wiped my face and she took hold of my hand and she just walked with me and she took me and she left me in the courtyard of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and there were some ladies who were ga- who had just gathered there and they just uh, put some makeup on and they just made me get ready for Prophet Wasallam. And this was all. How simple, how easy and how convenient. And then the marriage of Hazrat Aisha, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, the princess of Prophet Wasallam, he, he just conducted the nikah himself and then after a few days she was just made to ride a camel a she camel and Hazrat Salman Farsi radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was just holding the string and there was a maid servant a slave maid she accompanied Hazrat Fatma radiallahu ta'ala anha and they left her in Hazrat Ali's house and that was it that was it. And then in the evening after offering the Isha Salah, Prophet Wasallam went to their house and then he asked for a bowl of water and he dipped his fingers in the water and he sprinkled water on his daughter and his son-in-law and then he raised his hand and he made dua. He made dua for the blessings of Allah to be showered on his son son-in-law and his daughter and that was all no bridal dresses no bridal designer dresses or jewelries no photo shoots no color themes no functions no music no dancing no lighting no decorations no stage no floral arrangements no food no functions no bridal showers but still the happiest couple, the luckiest couple, the most successful family. So after reading and after after learning all this, why should we believe? Why should we assume? And why on the earth should we think that the respect, the regard of our daughters, of our children, will be affected when we missed any of what I've talked about, when we missed out of any of these things. If the princess of Rahmatullil Alameen, she could just enter that simply in her husband's house without all these customs and still be happy, why can't our daughters, with all, without all these ceremonies, 
be simply be simply just just enter their in-laws and enter their husbands houses i i ensure you that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a marriage which has the least of expenses is the most is the most successful marriage and then the apartments of the wives of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the ummahatul mu'minin we know they were all around the courtyard of masjid e nabvi and they were single they were just single small rooms as we learn from the words of the companions they were just like 8 to 10 cubits long and 6 to 8 cubits wide and the heights of the rooms was such that the companions narrate that if an adult man of average height just stood and raised his arm his hands would touch the roof and there were no doors the roof was just made out of the branches of the day tree through which sunlight and the rain water would just also come in and in bukhari hazrat abdullah bin abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he explains an occasion he was the nephew of uh, umul mu'minin hazrat maimuna radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and he was also the paternal cousin of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he spent a night at the in the apartment of hazrat maimuna radhiyallahu ta'ala anha when it was her turn of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam staying with her and he explains that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his wife they slept lengthwise in the apartment the space was so little that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his wife they were sleeping lengthwise in the apartment and i slept across the breadth at their foot end so we can easily get an idea of the size of the rooms but despite the shortage of accommodation in the rooms the mannerism was was accommodating and there was hospitality and the child was attended with love and affection remember when there's space in our hearts it is not difficult to create space in the rooms and the, in the how in the houses and it is this simplicity of life it is this simplicity of the life we need to remember in our lives also